The Java language was introduced in 1995, and it very quickly, within a few short years, became the most widely used language. It was created by Sun Microsystems, a hardware company most known for selling servers and workstations, and because Java originated as a corporate product, it has both a logo and a mascot. Java is an imperative language with a heavy emphasis on object-oriented programming. Like many languages, Java borrows much of its syntax from C. In fact, at first, it's quite easy to look at pieces of Java code and mistake them for C. Also like C, Java is statically typed, though there is a caveat to this because there is an exception in the static typing system where there's an element of dynamicism. What exactly that means we'll cover shortly. Unlike C, Java doesn't have pointers. Java does have what are called references, but these are reference variables just like we saw in Pigeon. It's just a variable which holds the address of some object somewhere on the heap. But there's no referencing or dereferencing, and there's nothing like pointer arithmetic. And whereas C has pointers to pointers, and arrays of pointers and pointers to arrays, and there's this intimate connection between arrays and pointers, uh, there's nothing like that in Java. A reference is just a reference. You assign an object to it, and so the address of that object gets stored in the reference. End of story. As I briefly mentioned when we discussed languages, Java is actually both compiled and interpreted. First, the source code is compiled into what Java calls bytecode, and then this bytecode is run by the JVM, which is basically a kind of interpreter, though in this case the JVM will also do what's called JIT compiling, just-in-time compilation, which we also discussed. Like all interpreted languages, Java uses automatic garbage collection. So we, the programmers, the users of Java, just get to create our objects, and we don't really have to be too concerned about keeping track of them. They just automatically get disposed of when we're not using them anymore. We don't have to explicitly get rid of them. The last big difference between Java and C, I would say, is that Java has an exception mechanism. As we saw in JavaScript, exceptions help us do error handling in a more elegant way than we have to do, say, in C when we don't have exceptions. One last really notable difference between C and Java is that whereas C has a very minimal standard library, the standard library in Java is much more complete. For instance, the Java standard library includes an XML parser, and it also includes uh, stuff for doing GUIs, graphical user interfaces. For both of those purposes, you might choose to use some third-party library instead, but the standard ones are there if you want to use them. Because the standard library is so big, it actually comes in three different versions. You'll hear talk about Java SE, Standard Edition, Java EE, Enterprise Edition, and Java ME, Micro Edition. Standard Edition, as the name implies, is the default. It's the one that you generally have on a PC. The Enterprise Edition contains everything in the Standard Edition, but then it also includes a whole bunch of stuff having to do with creating uh, server software. In particular, it's geared towards large-scale networking, like, say, in a big corporation, hence the name Enterprise Edition. The Micro Edition is the standard edition with some stuff stripped out for the purpose of making it just smaller, because the Micro Edition is targeted for, say, small devices like cell phones. On those devices, you don't have a lot of storage space, you don't have as much memory, so it doesn't make it, uh, so much sense to have really big libraries hanging around if you're not going to use them. In truth, the Micro Edition doesn't make as much sense as it once did because uh, the devices it was intended for have gotten more powerful and now it makes sense on a lot of those devices like smartphones to just, if you want Java, just use the full SC. Since its original release in 1995, Java's gone through a few updates and the latest version is now called Java 6 that was released in 2006 and the next version, Java 7, uh, may appear sometime in late 2010 maybe a bit later. It actually is quite important to know this because when you do a web search for some piece of the Java standard library, you really want to include Java 6 in your search because otherwise it's probably going to show up as the first result, uh, the old version of the documentation for some previous version of Java. It's also worth mentioning that previous versions of Java aren't called as you would expect Java 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The first release of Java is called 1.0, the second was called 1.1, then 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4, but then very, very confusingly, uh, Sun decided they wanted to call Java 1.4, Java 2. And then when they released Java 5, they decided to call that both Java 2 1.5 and Java 2 5.0, which makes no sense whatsoever. 
finally they sort of fixed this mess with Java 6 though it, to be clear although they called Java 5 often Java 5.0 or Java 2 5.0 Java 6 is not supposed to be known as Java 6.0 rather it's Java 1.6 and if you want to call it just by a single number you call it Java 6 and similarly Java 7 is going to be called either Java 7 or Java 1.7 uh, it makes no sense whatsoever, but that's just what they decided. As an object-oriented language, the core concept in Java is what's called a class. A class is a data type definition very much like a struct in C is a data type definition. The key difference, though, is that classes are comprised of not just pieces of data, which are called the fields, but also functions, which are called methods in this context. So a class is essentially a blueprint for a composite piece of data, and these pieces of data are called objects or instances. When we create a new object, a new instance, we say we are instantiating a class. So here's a trivial example class, which is given the name Moose. Moose is defined to have two fields, R, which is of type rat, and H, which is of type hamster, and then it has one method called foo, and the method foo takes no arguments and it returns void, it returns nothing. And of course in a real method you'd actually have lines of code, I'm just using ellipses to indicate that stuff goes here. There are a few things to note here. First, it's the convention in Java that all class names begin with a capital letter, so it's capital M moose, and it's capital R rat, and so forth. Also note the lack of a semicolon after the end curly brace. Uh, you may recall that struct definitions in C you put a semicolon at the end, whereas here in Java, to define a class, you never put a semicolon. It just ends with the curly brace. Finally, notice that I've put the fields up above the methods, and this isn't required at all. You can put all the stuff in a class in any order you want, but it's just good convention to put the fields first. Now, you are probably wondering about the relationship between methods and their class. It doesn't seem to really make sense. Well, the first thing to understand is that when you instantiate a class, when you create objects, say, of moose, each object doesn't have to have its own copy of the method foo. There's always just one copy of a method in memory, and it's shared among all the instances of the class. But there's a principled reason why we are combining functions with data types, where we are tying them together in one abstract entity called a class, and that principle is called encapsulation. The essence of encapsulation is that for any data type you should have a set of methods which are the only things that are allowed to touch the components of those objects. This doesn't mean that methods that aren't in this set shouldn't at all handle objects of this type. It means that if they want to read or manipulate the fields of that object they should use the methods of that object to do so for them. They shouldn't do it themselves directly. In effect, an object becomes a module where only its methods know what's really going on inside, and as far as everything else is concerned, they use the object's methods as a simplified interface for their dealings with that object.